This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you want to be a better miniature painter in less than 10 minutes, then this video is for you. I'm Lila and I'm a professional miniature painter. So let's talk about six tricks that you need to paint a better miniatures immediately, including one that may change how you approach the hobby forever. Okay, so you know the importance of wetting your brush, how to thin your paint, and the best way to apply your paint to your model. If you don't, then you should check out this video here where I go over everything you need to know as a beginner painter. If you're ready to start painting, then keep watching. Number one, understanding basic shapes. This is hands down the most important thing you need to learn to paint better miniatures. Since miniatures are so small, we need to paint in extra light and shadows to make them appear realistic. Luckily, the shapes one needs to learn to paint miniatures are quite simple. For our examples, we will pretend that our light source is directly from above, which is the same thing we do when zenithal highlighting. A quick rule of thumb, highlights and shadows follow the same shape of the element they are on. Okay, let's break it down. The arms and legs are sets of two cylinders put together, connected at the elbow and the knee. If your cylinder is at an angle or horizontals, they have a highlight going down the middle right at the pinnacle curve where the light hits our shape most intensely. Then as the material begins to curve away from our light source, we are left with midtones that wrap around the side. Areas that are perpendicular to our light source are almost always midtone. Finally, we have our shadow, which is underneath our cylinder. Shadows are almost always on the underside of an element, opposite of our highlight. These areas aren't hit by light, as the object blocks the light from illuminating that area. All of these variations are long and narrow, following the shape of our cylinder. If the cylinder is vertical, there is a midtone down every side, just like we said. Areas that are perpendicular to our light source are usually midtones. A human torso is a bit of an oblong rectangle with highlights up here at the shoulders, down the angle of the chest, then midtones or shadows down the sides, stomach, and back. Lastly, heads are basically spheres. However, I would be leading you astray if I made this sound easy. So we'll talk about how to paint faces and heads in a different video. Three, layering. Layering is basically putting everything we talked about above in paint. Layering is the act of placing several layers of paint on top of each other to create the illusion of highlights and shadows. Think of layering like building a pyramid where each layer is similarly shaped placed right on top of and at the center of our previous layer. The important thing with layering is to leave that border of color around each new application of paint. The more layers you apply, the smoother your gradient will appear, but more layers require more brush control and therefore are more difficult. Start with one midtone and one highlight and one shadow. Then you can work your way to more from there. But before I continue, let's talk about this week's sponsor, Squarespace. I have dreams of painting box art, so having a website that makes my work look great is vital. Squarespace offers beautiful templates that I can easily customize to my needs, and with Squarespace's drag and drop features using Fluid Engine, I can make my website look good on a laptop or, most importantly for me, mobile. I can even sell custom merchandise that creates a passive income stream that engages my friends and fans and scales with my brand. When you're ready to start your website, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash lilamev and use code lilamev to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, back to painting. In action, I painted my whole model in my midtone, and then I'm layering my shadows on top of each other. Each layer is a darker color and is applied in a smaller and smaller shape as it wraps underneath the arm.
Then the same with the highlight, where each layer is lighter in color and applied smaller and more at the top pinnacle of the fabric. But Lila, I thought you said that these were beginner tips. This doesn't sound very beginner to me. In that case, paint your element in your midtone and then apply your corresponding wash. Allow the wash to dry and then reapply that midtone on the high points of your miniature. Once that's dry, apply your highlight color to the highest points of the shape as well as at your edges. This really only works if your model is quite textured. Applying your wash over areas that are very large will result in coffee staining and uneven application. Coffee staining is when there is a dark line that forms around the edge of your wash application. So it's best to apply a wash over an entire area and if you see it pooling too much, sob up the extra with a damp brush. Five, lining and edge highlighting. Lining or recess shading is the act of placing a dark line in between each element of a model to give it definition and to help it pop on the model. In life, everything casts a shadow and it is this dark line that mimics those shadows and helps separate objects so they don't morph into a single ambiguous blob. Lining is one of the last steps of your miniature painting. I prefer to go with a darker color of whatever I'm lining, though you could also use black. Here I'm using a dark purple to match my shadow color. To do this technique, you'll need a long, thin brush with a good point. This will help the brush fit into those small areas of the recesses. Fill your damp brush halfway with thin paint to make sure the line is applied nice and smooth. Test it on your hand before you would apply it to your model. If you can't get an even smooth line on your hand, you won't do it on your model. It's okay if you mess up, you can always go back in and fix it later. If lining really isn't your thing, you can achieve similar results by wetting the area you want to recess shade. Allow the water to mostly evaporate and then dip a brush with a little bit of a black wash into that area. Note that your recesses have to be pronounced for this to work to its full potential. Otherwise, the wash could begin to bleed. Edge highlighting is just like it sounds, painting a highlight on the edge of an element. The raised edge of elements tend to get caught with an extra highlight, and this highlight, especially combined with lining, helps differentiate the elements within our model. Edge highlighting should be done with a lighter color of whatever you're painting. Roll your brush in an undiluted opaque paint and then gently apply your edge highlight by using the side of your brush. You're just going to delicately place the tip against that edge and move it side to side. Work slowly and methodically. Edge highlighting is most important at the top of your model so if you don't have time to edge highlight the whole thing, focus on the chest, stomach, arms, and whatever your model is holding. Miniature painting tends to be a solitary hobby, but it doesn't have to be. When in doubt, ask for help. The internet is full of amazing miniature painters and places where you can connect with amazing miniature painters. There are Facebook groups, there are discords, and of course, you can get advice from me and my wonderful community by joining my Patreon. But no matter what, posting your model and asking for feedback is one of the fastest ways that you can improve your miniature painting. But instead of just asking for general help, it's even better if you can be more specific about your request. Ask if your shadows are deep enough or if your edge highlighting looks clean. Asking a specific question is more likely to get you a more in-depth response. 
All right, that's it from me. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. Go join me on Patreon. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.